الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today inshallah ta'ala is going to be our last day with the introduction to Al-Qawaid Al-Fiqhiyah Today we're going to take the last two Qawaid Al-Fiqhiyah Al-Khamsat Al-Kubra We're going to be taking inshallah ta'ala the five supreme legal maxims We took Walillahi Alhamdu Al-Minna three and we've got two more to go, inshallah ta'ala, which we will take today. And once we finish those two qawaid, which are al-adah muhakkamah and al-dararu yuzal. Okay, am la darara wa la dirar. Both ways. Once we do those two qawaid, we're going to talk about how you can build yourself a library. If you want to start this science and you loved it, and you want to study even more what are the books that you should bring into your library those are the three things inshallah ta'ala that we will be taking today so al-adha muhakkama we'll be taking that and we'll study that inshallah ta'ala and the second one is al-dararu yuzal ama la darara wa la dirar and the third one is and the third one is uh, how can a student of knowledge uh, who wants to embark on this science, who wants to learn it. What books can I bring to my library? And which one is the best for me to study? And etc. We'll conclude with that, inshallah ta'ala. Let's go into the first one, which is Al-Ada Muhakkama. So first of all, what does it mean, Al-Ada Muhakkama? What does it actually mean? I wrote it on the board for you. It's written on the board. It is, اعتبار العادة حكما It is to consider the custom and the norms حكما as a judgment لإثبات حكم شرعي to establish and to affirm a legal Islamic ruling في المسائل الاجتهادية in ijtihadi related issues so they, when we hear the word ijtihadiya we already know what it means right there's no textual evidence for it al murtabitatu bil urfi that's connected to the urf let me go over it again so al adam muhakkama what does it mean it is you're making hakaman a judgment to either affirm something like you would do for Islamic ruling like you could say this is you can't do this and you can't do this the thing that's gonna now judge you is the adah, the customs of the people in what like in? fil masail al in ijtihadi related issues issues that don't have textual evidences there are no textual evidences for it if there's a textual evidence then no one talks are you with me, brothers? إذا ورد النص بطل القياس. If the textual evidence comes, no one can talk. No one can do analogy. We're talking about مسائل which are اجتهادية, matters that don't have textual evidence for it. The custom, it can judge. المرتبطة which is connected to العرف. So look, we did something here. We mentioned عرف, and what we're talking about is what. Ada, right? So what's the difference between Urf and Ada? That's a good question, right? So the second point is Al-Alaqatu Bain Al-Urf Wal Ada. The relationship between Urf and what? Ada. What is the difference between Urf and Ada? Because sometimes it's interchangeably used. Some scholars they took the opinion that Urf and Ada is a taraduf. They are synonyms. A taraduf means what? They are synonyms of one another. They're interchangeably used. As they're the same meaning. No problem. Urf and Adam mean the same. 
Are we all together, brothers? Another group of scholars, they said, no. Urf and Ada, there are difference. At Tabayun. There's a, there's a difference between Urf and what? And Ada, there are difference. When they said it, there's a difference, what is the difference between the two? The ones that said it's different, that Urf is different from Ada, they took two views. The ones who said it's different, they took two views amongst themselves. Some of them they said that the Ada, some scholars they took that the Ada is the actions. The Ada is the what? It's the actions. And the Urf is the speech. And another group of scholars they said no. The Ada is used when it's either a small number of people or whether it's one individual. And that the Urf is only for one individual. Are we all together? So, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, the Urf is the Urf is only one person. Uh, no, the Urf, sorry. And I, they took two views, right? What was the first view that I mentioned? That the Ada is Af'al, right? Actions. And the Urf is speech, that's one difference. Another group of scholars, they say, no, no, the difference is not that. The difference is that the Ada is what? One person and a Jama'ah, a group of people. Of course, that group can't be too much, just a group of people. And the Urf is, this was the mistake I did, the Urf is a group, just a group. It can't be one person. Now, let's understand, digest the information that I just said. So we want to understand. Urf is custom, people's adat, people's customs. It can be a judgment when the Quran and the Sunnah do not give a judgment. We always give this example and this is the easiest for people to understand. Allah tells us in the Quran to the married couples, Allah says to them, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Ma'roof. Live with each other in ma'roof. Ma'roof is urf. Live with each other in urf. The Sharia didn't tell you how to look after your wife in the sense, it didn't say to you, you have to give her this much money every month, and this is the kind of house that she needs to live in, and in the living room of that house, it has to have these windows. No. It didn't say that, did it? No, it didn't. And that she has to have three meals every day and she doesn't, you haven't fulfilled her rights. It didn't say that. All of that goes back to the custom. The custom is what's going to judge. We're going to go back to what? The urf, the adah. This, is, this is very important to know now. Does that make sense? But what issues are they used for? Al-masa'ili li-chihadiya. Ijtihadi related issues. I mean, there's no text for this issue. And later we're going to take mahal al-i'tibari, the places where we consider urf as a judgment, and the places that we don't, we'll speak about it in this point. But does everybody understand the definition? Now there's two words that are interchangeably used, which is al-urf and al-ada. Sah? They're interchangeably used. Some people they call it urf, and some people call it ada. The scholars, they said, that the urf and the ada are the same. Taraduf, stop wasting people's times. It's just one thing, easy. Another group of scholars said, they said no. At tabayun. At tabayun means what? They're not synonyms. They're actually different to each other. So the question is, then what's the difference? The ones who said they are different to each other broke into two groups. Are we all together? One group of them they said that the ada is a what? Af'al, it's action, right? And the urf is what? A speech. Inshallah ta'ala, when we come here, speech and action, we'll understand what that means. Okay? Bear with me. We're going to come to when he come here, mawdu'u. We'll take about, we'll, you'll understand what we mean by when we say urf speech and ada speech or whatever. We'll speak about it here. Okay? It'll come. And another group of scholars said, no, that's not the difference between the two. The difference is what? 
that the ada is one or a jama'ah, correct? And the urf is what? Just a jama'ah. Those are the two differences. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that's a good way. That is, mashallah, sah, correct. Sahih. Habit and more like a custom, sah. Yeah, sahih. Now we're going to go into the third point, which is taqsimatul urf. How is urf broken down? Categorization of al urf. Categorization of al urf. We're going to break it into four. The first one is Mawdu'uhu What it deals with. Okay? Urf is only two types. When it comes in, if you break all of Urf down, and what it deals with is either speech or action. That's what the customs of the people are. It's either a speech or it's a what? It's an action. The speech, for example, can be a people, they call something, they know it as this. Like the Arabs, the urf of theirs is that the walad is known as a what? The boy. And the girls call it bint. Like in the Quran, doesn't do that. The Quran calls it what? You'll see kumullahu fi awladikum. Awlad is the plural of walad. Is it only talking about the boy? It's talking about both. Pay attention to that. Like in the custom of the people has become, are we all together? That this is become their norms. They use the word walad as a boy. And that bint as a girl. Does that make sense? That's speech. Are we, are we, are we, are we, am I making sense here? Customs. You all know different customs. The second is fi'li. Fi'li is something that just happens. This is what people do. It's just their norm. This is, their, this is the norms of the people. This is their norms. For example, bay'ul mu'atat, the scholars call it. Which is somebody comes. They like a product. Okay. How much does it cost? The person goes, this is how much it cost. He doesn't say anything. He didn't say give it to me. He didn't say I want to buy it from you. He just gives the money and the other one takes the money, puts the money in the cashier. This action that's happening, custom means I like it and I'm taking it. Sahih. Correct? It, this person doesn't say, Ijab, I'm giving this to you. Qabil to, I've accepted it. On the price that you've given it to me. None of that he has to do. Does that make sense? The fact that he took it and the other one took the money, that is a custom. That's what custom is. It's action based. No one's talking. Are we all together, brothers? Sahibuhu, sahibuhu means the people who are doing it. The people who are doing the urf can either be am general. Or it can be khas specific. It's something that's generally over the board. This is what it's known as. I'm just trying to show you examples. Um, yeah, this is called an iPad, right? General? Anywhere else? Any other name for it? Tablet? That's all it. But everybody, if you said everybody, tablet, all over the world they use it. Tablet or. A, I just call it iPad. iPad is more for iPhone, right? That's not good. Tablet. That's, I think that's a general word. Everyone uses it as tablet, correct? That's the am. Over the board, wherever you go, I have a tablet, I'm using my tablet, everybody understands what you mean. And there's a khas. I'm just trying to give you examples that I th can think of. Like for example, in UK, in America, they call trousers pants. So, in the UK, we call pants underwear. Underwear is a pants, sah? Sah? <laughs> so it's a problem. That's urf khas for them. Different from us, it's not general, over the board. Does that make sense? So if, the, if, if a quarrel happens in America, in front of a qadi, and he goes, he stole my pants, and this, in UK it happens a quarrel of, uh, in front of the qadi, which one is he gonna judge it on? Urf of the UK, pants is not, huh? Do you see my point? The, the difference. We're going to be trousers. Am I making sense about this? Ha. The urf, when you look at it in terms of qabuluhu, in terms of his acceptance, or whether it's accepted or rejected, 
That's another categorization. It can be sahih or it can be fasid. What does it mean accepting or Some customs, when the boy wants to get married to the woman or the woman wants to get married to the boy, they go out, they have a meal, they go to a restaurant, they eat, they sit together, they get to know each other. The father would say to go, go with him. And he would go and the family would put them together and they would go out for a week and then then come and they say, we want to get married. Had urfun batil fasid. That urf is fasid. Corrupt. But you can't say, but we do this, it's normal, it's our culture. Yeah, but this culture is fasid because it goes against what? It goes against the Sharia. So this is fasid al-i'tibar. It's corrupted. Are we all together, brothers? Uh, are we all together? This was corrupt. We don't accept it. We don't... Even if it's a custom for a people, this custom is what? It's evil. Are we all together? Or another custom which is sahih, which is the ones I gave you already. The customs that people do that I already mentioned to you. Many customs that people do that are, that are sahih. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. Are we all together? And the asal for the people's norms, the adat, the asal for it is permissibility. Remember, we took that before. The asal for the people's customs is that it's permissible until there's a text that shows otherwise. So, sahih. If it doesn't go against the Quran or the Sunnah and it doesn't show it's haram, then we accept that custom and we, we, we do it. Are we all together, brothers? Then what about if, it, if it's a custom for a people, for the man to shave? And to go to a job shaved and no beard or anything, that custom is what? Fasid. It's corrupt. But that's my al- that's my custom. The Sharia came and gave a ruling for this issue. Does that make sense, brothers? But you have to groom yourself. Yeah, groom yourself. Islam doesn't say make yourself look good, but don't touch your beard. Okay, Sahih and Fasid. We, 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 you all understand that, right? Now we're gonna go into Madal Amali bihi inda ahlihi. Okay, in terms of implementation, this is very important that you learn it. It's very important that you that you understand it. Medal amali bihi. In terms of acting upon this, the scholars they divide the the urf uh, into four types. One that's mutarid, that always happens. This custom is always happens. For example, if you go to a shop and you want to buy an iPhone, what's the condition? What, what, what has to, it has to be sealed. It has to be in a box. Correct? That's roof everywhere. Does that make sense? If they give you, what about an iPhone that's open? Yeah? It's wrong. It's mutarid. We say this is mutarid. What is it? It's mutarid. So you can return it and say, give me back my money because it was open. But you'll say to you, whoa, 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 whoa. And even if it's open, there's no problem with it. You say you went against the qa'ida mutarida. You went against the continuous reality, which is that it has to be sealed and closed. Sah? This is the times that urf comes into place. He's going against the norms that's always taking place. He can't give you crisps. You guys call it crisp? You guys call it chips? You know what I mean, crisp? I'm not talking about the chips. Which call chips? The fries. Fries for us is chips. And crisp is what? The one that's in Doritos. Doritos is crisp for us. Anyways, if the British say it's crisp, they have to take it. That's where the language came from. Anyways, the crisp, um, uh, the uh, chips, if it's given to you and it's not sealed, that's a problem. They have to, there's no delete in the Quran and the Sunnah you're going to find it in. You're going to use al-Ada al mutarida the continuous qa'ida, the continuous norms, was that it has to be sealed. If you go home and you see open, you bring it back. It has to give you back the money. It's like it's faulted. Are we all together? The second one is ghalib. Ghalib. Ghalib means majority of the time. This is what happens. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. You're in a country, like in the UK. Okay? In the UK, what kind of calendar do we use? Let's forget the UK. We're not in the UK. We're in the UAE. Dubai. 
What's the calendar for this country? Is it the Gregorian that you see here? Which one is the Gregorian or the Hijri? The Gregorian. Ajib. I was going to say Hijri. Okay. Is that the highest? Is it high? Huh? So if two people argue right now, I bought this product from him and um, he, uh, I took it from him a month ago. Okay? A month ago. And this is the product. Or I took it, took it from him a period of time and they, can, they argue with each other. And he gave me, he said, bring it back to me. You don't have to pay me anything. I give you reassurance that my product is good. One month you can come back. Whether it's permissible or not, put that aside for me. One month. Which one month are we going to use? The Gregorian or the Hijri? We look at the country, the Ada. The Ada, the Ada. The custom. If the overwhelming majority of the times they use the Gregorian calendar, then that's what rules them. And if what they use, majority of the times it's what? If it's the Hijri, which they should do, then that's what? Are we all together, brothers? The calculation we're going to go back to? We're going to go back to the... What's the overwhelming majority? Musawin is when it's equal. It's equal. Like, for example, some countries in the world, the dollars and their country's currency is used same. Like, it's literally the same. They can buy with that currency, they can buy with dollars. So, there are some countries like that. If there happens a problem later, it's a problem. This type, these two types, the Ada doesn't work here. The Ada only works when it's Muttarid or Ghalib. Ghalib means majority of the times. And then Muttarid means when it's always. Like in Musawin means when they're both the same. The, 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 the dollars and the country's currency are used 50-50. The Ada can't work here. How can it distinguish one from the other? Are we all together? And the fourth one is Nadir, rare. This doesn't really even happen. It rarely happens. It rarely occurs. It rarely happens. The Ada doesn't come into place in this issue. Like for example, uh, no one would say, for example, nobody would use it except in a rare circumstances it will occur. You guys can think of better examples than I can. Does that make sense? Musawi means equal. The custom here, both things are both the same. 50-50. Like example I gave, um, using dollars and the, co the country's currency is actually the same. To be honest, the country I had in mind is my own country, Somalia. The dollars and the co country's currency is the same. So, it's the same. You can buy and sell in, with dollars in the shop and this country's currency is the same. Actually, to be honest, people prefer the dollars, but it's used interchangeably. Okay, what's the evidence for this qaida? What's the evidence for it? The evidence is for Qawluhu Ta'ala, Khudil Afwa, take forgiveness with you. Wa'mur bil urfi Muhammad, command them the urf. Command them the urf. Wa'mur bil urfi, command them the urf. Sahih? I remember you, you know the story of Hinda bint Utba. You know Hinda, right? The wife of Abu Sufyan. Hinda, do you all know her? She came to the Prophet. She said, Ya Rasulullah, my husband Abu Sufyan is a very stingy man. She said that to the Prophet. She said, He's a very stingy man. He doesn't give me anything. The messenger said to her, Go and uh, take money from him. Ma yakfiki. That which will suffice you and your children, bil ma'aruf. He didn't say to her, take this much. He didn't give her a limit and an amount that she needs to take. He said, whatever you and your children need, based on the custom, bil ma'aruf. Urf. Go back to the urf. Whatever your, the women of your caliber, are we all together? And the women of your, whatever they live on, take that from him, even if he doesn't want to give it to you. Because that's your rights. Take it from him. So, fifth. The fifth point that we want to mention, inshallah ta'ala, is shuroot al-urf. What are the conditions 
for us to consider the urf in the first place. When can we say, let's use urf? Let's, urf is the evidence here. When can we say it? The first one is, Adam khalafatuhu sharah. He can't go against the sharia. If he's going against the sharia, I gave you the example. The boy and the girl go out and they have a meal and they have a romantic night together. Just all this because we want to get to know each other. And that's our custom. That's how we've been doing it for decades and centuries. Then the answer to that is, it goes against the sharia. What does it do? It goes against the sharia. It's not allowed. The second condition for us to accept the urf and even take into consideration is ittiraduhu or ghalabatuhu. It has to be muttarid or ghalib. Ittiraduhu here means it's always happening. Or it's ghalib. So the overwhelming majority of times, this is what happens. This is the second condition. We don't take the musawin and the nadir into consideration. If the urf is equal, then no one's, going to, no one's going to look at it. No one's going to give it consideration. Or if it's, it rarely happens, then it's not going to give, be given consideration. It has to be something that's always happening in the community and it's known and this is the custom or the overwhelming majority of the situations, this is what happens. That's when it is taken into consideration. And the third one is Adam tasrih bi khilafi. Again, American person goes, Americans, what do they mean by pants again? They mean trousers, right? If he says, he took my pants, i.e. my underwear, this is now sarih, he spoke it directly what he means by pants. If that happens, we're not going to take the custom into consideration. Are we all together, brothers? Because he clearly spoke what he intended. Does that make sense? If he just says, an American says, oh, he took my pants, Straight away, don't take it as underwear like you would do in the UK. Take it as a trousers. Are we all together? But what about if he says he took my pants, i.e. my underwear? Then now he's what? He's clearly told us what he meant by it. We don't go back to the custom now. Are we all together? We don't take it into consideration. He went against the custom of the Americans. Am I making sense here, brothers? Yes? No? Ah, those are the main three, inshallah ta'ala. Other scholars mentioned many more, I didn't want to go into it. Number six, محل اعتبار العادة The place when عادة is used. ما ورد مطلقا When there's an unrestricted statement from the Quran, from the Kitab or the Sunnah. وَلَمْ يَرِدْ لَهُ ضَابِضٌ And there's no other way to restrict this meaning, there's no other way to implement this meaning. Nothing in the Sharia and nothing in the Arabic language. There isn't. And I gave you examples, which is how do you look after your wife and whatnot. That goes back to the Urf, right? Are we all together, brothers? It changes. From time to time, it will change. You don't know. So, Babit here means. There's nothing, there's no principle from the Sharia or principles from the Arabic language that specifies it. So then we go to, we go back to the Urf. Remember brothers, brothers, pay attention. This is very important. It'll save you a lot of time. If a word comes, it has to have three realities. One of three realities. It's either in the Arabic language, which is fil or it's defined by the Sharia, or it's Al-Urf. That's all you have to remember. For example, the word Al-Layl and Al-Nahar. Where are you going to go back to in the Quran? وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ The night. What does the night mean? It's the Arabic language. You just go to the Arabic language. The Arabic language defines wherever you see Layl and Nahar and Shamsu al Qamar. You don't need to go to the Sharia. You don't need to go to the Urf. The Arabic language. You just go to the language, right? Shara. Defines the word like a salah. Salah is defined by the Sharia. We don't care what it means in the Arabic language, or we don't care what it means. No, no. Salah means this definition in the Sharia. Does it make sense? And the third one is the Sharia did not define it. It's not in the Arabic language. It goes back to the custom. 
And that's what I was telling you all day. Are we all together, brothers? Just go, there's, no, there's, no, there's no definition. Al Mu'asharati Bayno Zawjain. The living between the two spouses. It goes back to the Urf. It goes back to Urf. Another example is the word as safar, traveling. The language cannot define it for you. The Sharia didn't define it for you. Where does it go back to? والعرف معمول به إذا ورد حكم من الشريع في لم لم يحد. so you go back to the people's custom and they will tell you what it means traveling for us. that's traveling. that's not traveling. are we all together brothers? good. so it's anything that the Sharia didn't define it and it's not in the Arabic language. you go to the عرف the customs. you go to the customs. now we're going to go into قواعد مندرجة. Principles that fall under Al-Ada Muhakkama Okay Principles that fall under it The first one is Al-Ma'roofu Urfan kal mashruti Shartan Anything That's known in the Sharia Sorry, sorry Anything That's known by the custom Established In the custom it's known it's like you and I gave each other a condition on this. Is a person allowed to break his promise and his condition? If I say to you, brother, I'm going to get you a car that's like this and like this, and I promise you it's going to have all of this, and I, I have to give you what I promised you. Sahih. Are we all together, brothers? The same is the urf, the custom. The way it is, is like a condition. Just like I told you before, iPhone, they'll give you a phone that's packaged, sealed. It's like they said to you, I, I promise you, our condition is it's going to be a sealed phone. It's the same. Because the custom is that you have to give me a sealed phone. Does that make sense? Al ma'roof urfan, anything that's known in the custom to be away, it's like you both took a condition with each other. It's the same. And we know taking a condition with each other, everyone has to fulfill it, correct? Are we all together? Like for example, some of the, some of the people when they're marrying off a woman, they said, I'm going to marry off to so and so. With a dowry, the, the money of the dowry is this much. And then they carry on saying, to keep be with her in good or to what? If, to keep her in good and take care of her in good or to what? Or to let her go in good if you don't want her. That's, that's some of the shuyukhs what they do when they give. They marry, they marry a boy off to a girl. They don't need to do that. Because the customs already told us that the woman has to be taken care of in a particular way. It's like you already agreed to it. Does that make sense? There's no need to take a shart and a condition with all of that. It's already known by the urf, the custom of the people. Does that make sense? Yes? No? The conditions and the customs are the same. That's all it's telling you here. Number two is you cannot reject the changing of a ruling because of the changing of the time. Because the custom changed. At the time of Imam al-Bukhari and others, for a person to be walking outside and drinking, hadith wasn't taken from him. It was khawari al-muru'ah. It was khawari al-muru'ah. They went against the customs of the people. It was looked down at. A'udhu billah. You're walking outside, you're eating, you're drinking. Is that the case now? I don't know about this country. But in... No, it's not. If I said walking and he's eating or something... Maybe it is, Allah But I'm saying things do change over... Over time, what was one up, once upon a time seen bad may not be seen necessarily bad. Are we all together, brothers? It will not be seen bad after because the custom has changed. What has changed? The custom has changed. The custom has changed. Okay, that's important. This goes around the urf and the custom of the people. If the custom changes, as long as that custom is not what. Does it go against the what? 
He can't go against the dalil and what we mentioned. He can't go oppose the evidences and whatnot. The third one is al kitabu kal khitab. Writing is like saying. To write something is like saying it. Because in terms of custom, are we all together, brothers? Can you not send your resignation letter by email? Huh? Can you send a resignation? Resign, you can resign, resignation. Is it resignation? Resignation, sorry. Resignation. Resignation. And you resign from your work. And you send it by email. Is it accepted? It's accepted. Urf custom is there. Fine. Or you fax it. It's like you said it. The Qadi is going to say it, yes. Because the custom is that, it's the, it's the same. So we say, Al-Kitabu Kal-Khitab. Writing is like, it's like saying it. Divorcing your wife over WhatsApp. Is it going to happen? Of course it's going to happen. It's the same. We're all together, brothers. It's the same. It will take place. Those are the examples, or those are some principles that fall under Qawaid Mundarija. Principles that fall under Al-Adam Muhakama. Now we're going to go into the last and final uh, legal maxim, which is La Darara wa La Dirar. I forgot the Ra, right? لا ضرر ولا ضرار. What does it mean لا ضرر ولا ضرار? It means to remove harm before it even happens or at the beginning or removing it after it's already happened. In simple terms, that's what it is. It's to remove evil before it happens or after it happens. Okay, that's what it means. What's the evidence for this qa'idah? Daliluha. What's the evidence? It's based on the hadith of Sunan Ibn Majah. Some scholars, they weakened it. Others didn't. But the meaning is what? Sahih thabit. Which is, la darara, there is no harm. You can't harm yourself and you can't harm, harm others. La darara wa la dirar. You cannot harm yourself and nor can you harm others. You're not allowed to. Very good. That's the delil for it. What is al qawaid al mundarija? The qawaid that fall under it. I only chose two qaida because there's many we can choose. Is al dararu yutfa'u bi qadril imkan. If evil comes, you have to stop it bi qadril imkan, however much you're able to. Remember, the evil, sometimes you can fully remove it. What can you do? You can fully get rid of it. And sometimes what can you do? You can reduce it. What can you do? You reduce it. You have to do what you can. Okay? Remember removing evil. When you're removing evil, I'm going to mention it here, don't worry. Pay attention here now. Brothers, are we? Are we all together? A brother goes, he says, look, Sheikh, Hey, in the UK, there's a nightclub. Hey, I want to go there and I want to give a little reminder to the people going to the club. I want to remind them of Allah, the day of judgment. I want to take many people away from the door. Hey, what's the ruling? My answer is, What does this brother want to do? What's his intent? His intent is to bring people to guidance. We'll say, first of all, think about repenting the evil. The evil that's going to come is what we have to push away before thinking about bringing people to guidance. And what is the evil that we need to repel? You are probably going to, going to go into that club and start dancing. And, 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 and Are we all together, brothers? So repelling the evil takes precedence over what? Over thinking about bringing good. People always just look at the good that they're going to bring. Well, in Dalika, there's a... Uh, a very evil concept that people push, which is um, al-ghayatu tubarriru al-wasila. 
that the goal justifies the means. What do they say? The goal? I mean, the end justifies the means. Ooh. That goes fully against the Quran and the Sunnah. Are we all together? It doesn't. Hooks or crooks. I need to get there. I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do that. As long as the ends is good. No. Our religion is the opposite, which is repelling the evil and getting rid of it. Takes precedence over what? Thinking about? Before even thinking about bringing good. Remember, when you want to repel evil and you want to get rid of evil, what do you have to get rid of, brothers? You have to try to get rid of it with, an, with some evil less than it. So there's a harm. If the, har- if, the, if the way that you're going to push this harm away is going to bring a harm greater than it is not permissible. You saw a brother drinking khamar, drinking it fast, enjoying himself in Ramadan. Ramadan, khamar, he's drinking it. And you went and you slapped the khamar out of his hand. And he picked up a gun and he shot you in the head. And then he went and shot your family. Hey, isn't that greater harm? Is it not a greater harm? Huh? It's a greater harm. So you trying to stop an evil brought a greater evil. Are we all together, brothers? But like Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah, at his time something happened. There was the leaders of his time, they used to drink khamar. They used to drink khamar, a lot of khamar. Some of the scholars at that time, they tried to write letters and, you know, rasail and things to the leaders telling them, stop drinking the khamar. Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah, fanahahum. He stopped the people from writing towards those leaders about the khamar. He said, leave them alone. Let them drink the khamar. And why? He said, because when they drink the khamar, they don't kill anyone. And killing is greater than the drinking of the khamar. They're now busy with themselves and just, they're drunk all day. See? He weighed the masalih and the, the mafasid. It's to think. When you see an evil, it does, it's not enough to say, Wallah, I saw an evil. I have to remove this evil. No. Remember, you can't bring a greater evil or even equal to it. Even equal to it, you're not allowed to. It has to be what? Either to reduce it or what? Or fully get rid of it. And we all together, brothers. And wallahi, many of us cannot determine where the harm is greater or not. We can't see that. Are we all together, brothers? So we leave it for the seniors, those who are older in age and knowledge. We finish. Walillahi alhamdu wal minna. Praises to Allah alone. We have taken the five al qawaid al khamsat al kubra. If you memorize those five qawaid al khamsat al kubra, and you really, brothers, read um, into it more, I promise you, you will truly be- enjoy how the religion is, the, the sharia, the way it's set. There's, I was going to give you guys a maktaba on how to. How, I was going to give you how to a library and your know, maktaba, but I'm just going to tell you one book I think that if you all buy, it'll suffice you. It's one book. It's one of the best books I believe that's written now for all of you guys that can benefit these five legal maxims. It's a it's qawaidul. It's called al qawaid al fiqiyah al kubra, something like that, and the author is Sheikh Saleh. Sadlan. Shah Saleh Ibn Ghanim Sadlan. If you buy his one on the five legal maxims. So it's Rish Sheikh. The author is Saleh Ibn Ghanim Sadlan. He recently died. Does anyone know of him? Ah, Rahimahullah, Rahmatan wa Sa'ad. He came and visited us in the UK a couple of times. Sheikh Saleh ibn Saleh ibn Ghanim, Ghanim, Nim, Nim, with me, Sadlan, As Sadlan. Sheikh Saleh Sadlan is called, they call him. He was a blind Sheikh. And he authored a book in the Qawaid al Khamsat al Kubra, in Fi Five. And what he did that I have not seen anyone else do, and that's my knowledge. Well, knowledge is with Allah. He wrote the five legal maxims. He gave examples for it, 
and all of these qawaid al mundarija tahtahu he brought just about every one that can fall possibly under it little can someone find and add something to that that he hasn't already mentioned are we all together about this he mentions all of the qawaid al mundarija when he mentions the qawaid all the qawaid that fall under it he mentions there very beneficial very beneficial buy it read it because these five are unanimously agreed upon by all of the madahibs of course the application is different but it's agreed upon and so if you start with what is agreed upon you can make your way to what is different upon right and that's a stepping stone to studying qawaid al fiqhiyah like that does that make sense and i also encourage you all i encourage you to memorize the kitab written by Sheikh, Sa- Sheikh Abdullahi, Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasr al Saudi. His little Qawaid book is very little, but if you memorize it, it helps you sometimes to just use it. I, I, I encourage you all to memorize it. And if you see in yourself Abdul Rahman ibn Nasr al Saudi, he has a kitab in Qawaid al Fiqhiyah. He he mentions in the beginning, he said, Ihris ala fahamika lil qawaidi jami'atil masail shawaridi li tartaki fil ilmi khayra murtaqa wa taqta fi subra alladhi qad ufiqa wa hadhi qawaid nadamtuha min kutbi ahli al-ilmi hassaltuha. It's a nice 37 lines, 38 lines, 39 lines, something like that. Easy to memorize. Easy. Two or three days you can finish it. Keep in mind, if you see in yourself more enthusiasm, you're like, I can do better. This book is too small. I want to go in. I like the science. Then I would encourage you to uh, read, uh, memorize a kitab that's called Al Al Faraid. It's called no no. It's called Al Manzumatul um, Fadfari. Al Manzu Al Manzumatul Al Fad Fad Fari. Things You know what's amazing? This book is very good. The scholar who wrote it is an Indian Sheikh. He's a what? His name is called Anwar Shah Al Fadfari. He's alive, he's still alive. Okay. Some of you guys thought I was gonna say Anwar Shah Al Kashmiri. No, it's Anwar Shah Al Fadfari. He's alive. Is it memory? He's got a fiqh book, but not the, the, the poetry of this one. Wow, okay. If it's in English, that's share it with us, inshallah. He, you know what they did, subhanAllah? He was a Shafi'i. I heard he left Shafi'iyah. Why? Why? And then he became a Hanbali. And he did a poetry for them. Are we all together, brothers? He did a poetry for the Hanbali madhab. And it's now become the book that they apply in the memorization of Haramain, Makkah and Medina. They memorize it in Dar al-Hadith al-Khayriya, they memorize his poetry of the Hanbali Madhab. Rather, it's one of the best texts to memorize in the Hanbali, uh, uh, the Hanbali Madhab. Are we all together, brothers? Am I making sense? Rather, he has another kitab called, another manduma in grammar, amazing. It's called Thulafiyat. Thulafiyat. Amazing, very good, very mudakik. This man, after you finish memorizing Qawaid al Fiqiyah by Sheikh Abdurrahman Nasr al Saudi, go for the Munduma al Fadfari by this author. And he's doing a lot, he's doing a lot of poetry of a lot of books. Very good, very good. A lot of people just miss it because he's still alive. People just like somebody who's dead, right? Gone long. These ones are very good, very good. Wallahi. Um, if you still see, you know what, I can even do more. I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. Then I encourage you to memorize Al Faraid al Bahiyya, Fil Masail al Fiqhiyya. Al Faraid al Bahiyya by Al Ahdal. Al Faraid al Bahiyya. It's called what? Al Faraid al Bahiyya. I encourage you to do that. The reason why I didn't tell you guys to remember Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen's one because it's got Qawaid Fiqhi and Qawaid Suriya emerged. It's not separated it from one another properly. Are we all together, brothers?
الأهدل He originally, this poetry is taken from the Al-Ashbah wa Nadair al-Suyuti You know Suyuti is Al-Ashbah wa Nadair Al-Ashbah wa Nadair by Suyuti Jalaluddin al-Suyuti He wrote the kitab Al-Ashbah wa Nadair Ahdal came and he turned it, the whole book into poetry And this is like basically the last book that you can memorize to be honest Once you do this, it's all there It's all there, don't worry You have it all the rest is just your reading and your studying and you're going over books here and there and increasing in your understanding. But everything else is, inshallah ta'ala, it's with you. And that's the real knowledge, brothers. The real knowledge that you can claim is yours is what's in your? Knowledge is what's in the chest, not what's in the papers. Sah? Those are the books that I will encourage you. I will encourage you all to try to... If you can't and you don't want to memorize all of that because of whatever reason, at least memorize Sa'di's one. Abdurrahman Nasr Sa'di's one, at least memorize that. That's a must for every student of knowledge. Must. Are you with me, brothers? Because you just want to memorize, remember each qa'ida, how it was. And he, he did that for you. The main qa'id. The best explanation I have seen, my humble opinion, for Sa'di's uh, translate explanation. Sa'di's explanation Qawaid by Sa'di The best explanation I've seen The best Is Sheikh Sa'ad Nasr Shitri Sheikh Sa'ad Nasr Shitri His explanation on the Qawaid al-Fiqiyya by Sa'di Is the best The best It's on YouTube and it's PDF And it's actually a book now They made it into a real, real book Anyone who wants it I can download I can email it to you It's PDF It's online are we all together, brothers? Any questions? The Manduma Tul Fadfari, I don't know. Manduma Tul Fadfari, I, I just downloaded one from the internet. I'm trying to memorize it myself. I recently came across it. So there's just one, one online I saw And I just started to memorize it I don't know the publication for it I've never seen it before Lakin al faraid al I think Darul Asima published it I might be wrong But I think I saw Darul Asima's publication And Darul Asima, they're good with their publications Any other questions? Fadal Maybe, yes. Maybe, yes, it's true. It may be possible. It could be. I would have to really understand the reality of that situation in order to say, yes, this is correct. No, it doesn't make sense. Huh? And they're equal. No, the custom is not the culture, the, the background the person is necessarily from, is where they live at that current moment. Huh? If an Indian lives in the UK, you don't say, well, you're from India, I'm going to give you 200 rubies. You know? I have to say, brother, the UK is 2,000 pounds, sorry. It's the country. Like in some scholars, they say, if you marry a, watch, a rich woman from a rich background, her father's rich, she's from a... The order for her is the way that you married her in. You cannot, you can't say to her, hey, listen, we, I, my, my family, we sleep on the floor. That's how we do it. And she used to sleep on a king, queen science bed by herself. That's how her family raised her and that's how she always were. Some scholars, they hold the opinion like Sheikh Islam and others that you cannot reduce her from that status. And they put it under al-ma'roof urfan it's like you agreed with that girl when you were getting married to her. Huh? 
that you're going to take care of her like that. Be careful who you get married to, brother. <laughs> huh. No, when it comes low, you have to, then it becomes a standard. Uh, that's what, no, the Sharia puts it up. It says to you, no, know, like every one of her peer. Like, and if she's high, you can't put it down. Yeah. <laughs> it's the country. That's the strongest opinion that the custom is based on the country and that country that you live in. Yeah. If a man met her and marries a sister, like recently, consultation session, some brother, sister goes, I got married. My husband didn't even tell me how much the dowry was. I said, don't worry, your dowry is whatever woman is given to in the country that you're living in. I go, who? It's the custom. I said, he forgot. No problem. Now it's going to be told what it is going to be. Huh? Custom. Hey, yeah? Hmm. No, no, not talking about Tawheed is what's the greatest evil. You see, the, yeah, pay attention here. Yeah, pay attention to the brothers. The evil are types, and the masalih are types. There's a maslaha called maslaha khalisa. Maslaha khalisa means this maslaha is pure, there's no evil in it at all. And that's Tawheed. Nothing can go over, over that. The Salaha was always higher than any and everything. Does that make sense? There's a second thing in the Sharia, the Maslaha, and there's also a Mafsada in there, like da Jihad. Jihad, there's a Maslaha, and there's a Mafsada in there as well. It's not pure. What's the Mafsada? Children becoming orphans. That's a Mafsada. Are we all together, brothers? It's a Mafsada. Does it make some sense? That's why the jihad gets permitted if that, the, with, the shari, with the sharia context, if the maslaha is rajiha, then it becomes permissible. Because that blood going, and those children becoming orphans, and then it's rajiha. Does that make sense? So nothing can surpass tawheed. Maslaha is khalis. And shirk, which is opposite, its mafsada is khalis. Its mafsada is what? Pure mafsada. There's no good in shirk whatsoever. Sahih. Like in jihad, the maslaha and the mafsada, which one is more? When it's sanctioned correctly, the maslaha is rajiha. There's more maslaha. Khamar, there's maslaha in there. Why not? There's benefit in there. Are we all together, brothers? But which one's more? So there's more. Does that make sense? يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ Min naf'ihima Naf' Allah mentioned this benefit in the khamar But the mafsad is higher So we get rid of that Does that make sense? So Tawheed speaking about it Is pure maslaha Nothing can surpass that I go together uh, yeah. Like in, sometimes the maslaha could be Not to mention Muhammad Abdul Wahab Maslaha Or Ibn Taymiyyah could be a maslaha. The name could be a maslaha, not the concept like it. Sahih. Ripping the first page of Kitab al-Tawheed and the other back side, the other side of Kitab al-Tawheed and saying, Salaam alaikum brother, I'm going to teach you guys a book. And you keep it like that. Is it a maslaha? Sometimes it could be a maslaha. Sahih. Like in not Tawheed. Tawheed has to be, has to be taught. Hey, yeah. Any other questions?